Evelyn literally morphed into this. Man, I'm gonna somehow like get a job at like Wall Street. Like, <laughs>
Petrosky is Michael Murphy, Senior Advisor, Matty Hoffman. Topographer, Drill Designer, Bob Yanel. Pembridge Marching Rams League extends a special thank you to our parents for their contributions to the and to Pembridge High School and District Administration, as well as our school board for their ongoing support for this and all performing arts programs. Major Cameron and Major Bull, is the crew ready? Ready. Energy marching Rams, you may get underway.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hellman Field here at Grand View Health Stadium. We'd like to just a quick one. Give you a chat match Saturday at the end of your Petrick Rams. Very nice to like to remind you, the third one league coach, good sports just a team athlete, coach, and executive. The structure of collaboration by the court is best to be beneficial in a positive manner. The vanity, racial, and sexist comments of others can then act as officials, team athletes, or team representatives will not be tolerated. Individuals make the structure part of their moves.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Grandview Health Stadium here at the beautiful, beautiful campus of Penridge High School here in Perkasie, Pennsylvania, East Rock Hill Township. This is Mr. Hagen, uh, 12th grade principal, back here tonight for the District 1 PIAA 6A championship game. I'm here with my uh, good friend and uh, colleague, Mr. Ott. Welcome, Mr. Ott. How are we doing, Mr. Hagen? I'm excited. We're here for the second night in a row for a district championship game after the girls' soccer team won the district championship over Springford last night. Mr. Hagen is excited. There's a shocker. Yeah, I get a little excited about things. It's an um, exciting night, Mr. Hagen. Somebody tonight is going to win a District 1 championship, both Souderton and Penn Championships. 99 years at Souderton. Uh, they have, neither team has been to this point of the season playing for a district championship. Uh, the Rams come in tonight uh, undefeated 6-0. and They started the season with a 35-14 win over Central Bucks High School West. Defeated Neshaminy at their Heartbreak Ridge 30-0. They beat Central Bucks East 42-0. Central Bucks South 32-0. Then they uh, beat Abington School District uh, High School, the Galloping Ghost, 21-15. We started the District 1 playoffs of the semifinals last week and had an exciting, crazy game uh, where the Rams came up, uh, came out on top 36-33 over an amazingly athletic and talented Coatesville Red Raiders team. Saturday comes in with the exact same record as 6-0. They're a three seed in the district championship uh, in District 1. Uh, they started the season with a five-point win over uh, the team from the, above us uh, in the uh, Bucks County region. Uh, they beat them 28-13. They uh, beat Council Rock North 31-8. Uh, Upper Dublin 28-7. Upper Dublin's playing for a 5A district championship tonight against uh, Westchester Ruston. Uh, they defeated Happer Horsham 36-13, Ben Salem 55-12, and then in the semifinals, they had a, an amazingly good game defensively, even though uh, Springford scored 24 points. We got to say that again? You get any of it? All right. Yet. No. Any of it? All right. So uh, sorry about the little hiccup here, a little technology issue. But uh, um, the uh, Saturday, uh, I'll just recap a little bit. Saturday, Saturday comes back in six and zero in the district finals here with wins over Quakertown, Council Rock North, Upper Dublin, Hatboro, Horsham, Ben Salem. And then last week in the semifinals, defeated Springford, the Rams, 27-24. They were up 20 to nothing in that game and uh, held on for a big win, they had a defensive touchdown. Uh, tonight is the 90th meeting between Souderton High School and Penridge High School. Uh, Penridge leads in the series with 48 wins, 36 losses, and five ties. Uh, Souderton is playing their uh, 99th year of football. Uh, they started in 1921. This is their 980th game all time. And Penridge is in their 90th year of football with 950. Absolutely fantastic over the years. The uh, the last uh, 10 games um, uh, with the Rams and uh, and the, the Indians, the Big Red as we call them, uh, the Rams have scored 27.6 uh, points a game to the Indians 18.7. The Rams have won six of tonight. Uh, Ed Gallagher, who's uh, been the head coach since 2003, uh, has over 100 wins under his belt. And he was the head coach of, of the Rams head coach, Cody Muller, when he went to Southern in high school before he went on to further his education and career at the University of New Hampshire. So uh, Coach Muller has not defeated his old coach in the first two years that he's been our head coach. But we look forward to uh, possibly getting in, getting him his first win and a district title. Now. Uh, games going on around the state tonight are actually few and far between. Uh, Westchester Ruston's playing at Upper Dublin. Upper Moreland is at Oil City. Oil City way up in Northwestern, Holidaysburg. The Chamonix is playing at Central Buck South. Council Rock South at New Hope Solbury. Conwell Egan is playing at William Tennant. Perkiomen Valley at Quakertown. And Springfield Township is at Wissahickon. We're about ready for the Rams to take the field. Here they come. Jack Ferguson, Eli Cantor. Two schools are very well represented uh, in the uh, Suburban One League, both winning their championships in their respective leagues this year, excuse me, their divisions this year. Uh, Principal Sam, Dr. Sam Verano at, uh, at Southern has been there for a very long time. 
time, we invite all to stand and face the flag as we honor the United States of America with the play of our national anthem by our very own Penridge Marching Rams. That was a great rendition of the National Anthem by Mr. Fair and the band on this week that we honor veterans. I saw Mr. Mignona here, Hagen, walking the stadium. Great to see him out. Mr. Rakowski, me. <laughs> Not Mr. Hagen. Mr. Mignona. I, I got up the steps once, Mr. Hopp. We're good. <laughs> All right, so uh, there was a ceremonial coin toss done before the game, and uh, it looks like the Rams uh, are going to receive the opening kick of the game. Starting offense line for the off the offense, Penridge offense, uh, Stephen Rootlinger tackle, Danny Fish at the other tackle. Joey Rendon and Jake Tarburn at guards. Eli Canner will be the starting center. Joey Kaserik at wide receiver. Brandon Lanher, Braden Lanher, Dylan Pals uh, will be the running backs uh, with either Shane, Shane Hartz or Jack Ferguson at fullback. Uh, Tyler Drumboer at tight end and Joey, uh, excuse me, Adam Mossbrook will be the second wide receiver. And we're ready to play here at Grandview Health Stadium, Hellman Field for the first ever district title game hosted by the Rams, played by the Rams. Just short kick. Pals takes it out of bounds around the 32, 33 yard line to where Penridge will take over. First and 10. Bobby Croyle leads the Rams onto the field. Bobby had a big night last week. He threw for 300 yards. including some big throws late in the game. One was a fourth and five. Go through the next. We're in a shotgun, Hartzell. Little takes wild a little wildcat, wild cat, yep. First down by Hartzell. Hartzell rumbles for about 12 yards. That was a great opening play. The Rams coming out with a little something different. Bobby Croyle not on the field, but uh, Hartzell lined up, taking the snap. It's going to be a first down for the Rams. So they're on the 41-yard line. Croyle's now back on the field. Little motion by Powell's. Cuts it back up inside. Gets another big gain. Looking at about a seven-yard gain. All right, Powell takes that, that post play inside, gets up for about seven yards. Uh, it's going to be a second down and short. We got a second and two. All right, Rams come out in their uh, typical double wing formation. Quirrell's looking to throw, quick hitter. Not, uh, incomplete. Passing for complete. 
Joe Kisser. Bring up a third and a, I don't know, a long three, a sh you know, a long three. Yeah, three, two and a half, three, somewhere around there. See what the Rams do with their first third down and attempt here. Um, are we in? Are we in uh, four down territory yet, Mr. Hagen? Here on this side of the field. Uh, you know, I think we're uh, up front. We're a little bit bigger and stronger than they are. Uh, if they get one or two yards here, I would say definitely we're going to go for it on uh, on fourth down. We're going to trade the tight end over. A little motion with Pals gives the Hartzell up the middle. He's rumbling. I think he's going to be a little bit short. He's going to bring up a fourth and one. I did not see the punt team getting right, so the Rams are going to go for it. It's going to be a huge play on the first series here for the Rams. So you're going to bring in another wide receiver and Jack Ferguson off the sidelines. Those are some big backs for high school. Hartzell's 225 pounds. Ferguson's 225 pounds. They're lined up in an eye. Looks like Croyle with a quarterback sneak and he's going to have it easily. There you go, Bobby. Bobby gets a uh, good three yards. I mean, that's almost automatic. They're running behind Eli Kantner. He's a six foot, 260 pound senior. He's had a heck of a year. So they'll bring up a first and 10 on the Satterton 42 yard line. About 10 minutes and five seconds left here in the first quarter. Rams again come out in that double wing formation with Powell's and Landher. Is it going to be a pitch to Powell's? There Scott. goes Dylan. Man, he got skinny, unlike us. He got through that hole. He got skinny, but he also got Dick Tarburton out in front of him, and that's a great formula. The Rams bring Tarburton out. He's got great athleticism for a guard. He runs really well. He, he actually runs like a back, Scott. Like he gets out in front and he leads the way and clears the path for those guys. Absolutely. So we're on the 16 yard line, first and 10 for the Rams. We got a little motion here. Gonna be give to, looks like Hartzell. Hartzell gets down inside the 15. We're going to give him one on that play. Shane, Shane Hartzell looked like they were trying to set up a little option coming this way. Uh, not a big fan of the option towards the sidelines, but uh, I see what they're trying to accomplish. They ran that effectively a few times last week against Coatesville. So the ball's sitting right on the 15-yard line. It's second and eight. Croyle's in the shotgun. Hartzell behind him. They bring Landher in motion. It gives the Landher off the right side. Ooh, he took it outside. And he's lucky if he gets back to the line of scrimmage there. And that's going to bring up a third and nine. All right, third and nine from the uh, 15 and a half yard line. We are in Brandon Shire territory for a field goal, but. Uh, Let's get it. Get the first down here. It's definitely a possibility of four down territory if we uh, cut this down to about three, four yards. So we got a little motion from Hartzell going right to left. Croyle rolling to his left. He is a lefty. He's going to tuck it and run. And he's taken down around the 12 yard line. So he's going to be well short of the first down. Field goal unit comes onto the field. Brandon Shire, number nine. Can you see? My whistle, my whistle, my whistle. All right, we're going to line up for a 18, 20 yard, 28 yard field goal. Mr. Hagen, you didn't even have to take your shoes off to add that up. That's good work by you. No, I, I, I've been practicing. Plenty of leg, and it is good. And with 7.41 remaining in the first quarter, the score. The Shire hit that from about 28. Scott, it looked like it would have been good from almost 50. He, he crushed that. Yeah, he's a, he's a really big kid. Uh, they enlisted six, 
six one one eighty, Scott. I see him at six one one eighty, Mr. Ott. <laughs> That's good vision, big yeah, fella. Yeah. One of the one of the areas that the Rams had some problems last week was in the uh, kickoff coverage game against Coatesville. Coatesville had some great speed. So let's see what Coach Muller has done to adjust to that. Yeah. Sean per, uh, Purvey and uh, Winday Dawson are going to be the return guys all night for Saturday. And hopefully they're busy as they're returning a lot of kicks tonight. Now we're going to go with a long squib here. Looks like number nine gets it and brings it out shy of the 35. It's going to be a first down and 10. I think the tackle was by 43, no, Dylan O'Brien. Nice job. Saturn's offense, uh, senior Evan Kutzler is the starting uh, quarterback for them. He's one of their captains, listed 6'2", 168. Uh, he's got some three running backs that are going to be behind him. They run primarily a wing tee offense with a little bit of spread mixed in from the pistol. Kutzler fakes right, pitch left to number seven, Jalen White. White with a big gain around left end. Yeah, looks, looks like he picked up about eight or nine. Yeah, one thing that we're definitely going to see tonight with Ed Gallagher is uh, trick plays. A lot of misdirection. Yep. They, um, they beat us last year on a fake punt uh, to solidify the victory. So it's White again. It's in the middle, and he doesn't have much there, and I think he actually might have lost Maybe a yard, maybe two. All right, here's Third's going to bring up a third and two. Sophomore Phil, Phil Pachotti in on that tackle. Third down and two. I watched the film of the Coatesville game last week. Pachotti was making plays left and right, Scott. He was in the backfield the whole game. Yeah, he's. Uh, we've had some uh, some fantastic linebackers, as we've talked about over the weeks. And uh, Phil is going to be in the, in the long line of uh, great, great linebackers here at Penridge. Kutzler's in the shotgun. He's got a little motion and it's a give to sweep right. And he cuts it back up and does get the first down for the Indians. Scott, you being a former lineman, Salerton's left tackle really jumped out at me. He's six foot six. 342 pounds, Ben Murawski. He gets his hands on people, he collapses that whole left side. Oh, nice play! Fabian Padin with the, the pass break up there. So it's a, uh, a half sprint to the left for the quarterback. So the, the offense line setting up and just not letting anybody get to the edge. And they're, they're kind of opening the gates to, on the back side. Let the, the defense lineman get upfield. They know they won't get around the edge to get him. Uh, Patton did a nice job. He broke on the ball, got his top hand through, and knocked it down. Kutzler's under center now. First time we've seen that this game. With a true wing T backfield, double tight. Trap up the middle. A lot of running room. Yep, that would be uh, Jalen White on the carry for the first down. Over the last several years, the uh, the Rams have had a little trouble defending that trap. Uh, Cody Moore played against this, or played in this offense and, and defense, um, and uh, Coach Gallagher's gotten the best of him a couple times on this. First down. Yeah, yeah, I thought there was somebody on the right side job jump Scott. Yeah, that was number three. Uh, tight end left a little early. They were going to run a half sprint action to the right and then throw back to him across the field. Uh, a little throwback action. Uh, that's a 1970s and 80s offensive play. Uh, Coach Fenton and Coach Dara back in the day. Coach Hollenbach and Coach uh, Kristiniak and Hellman. I'm sure they ran that a lot of times in these games. As most people probably know, Mr. Uh, Coach Gallagher was the offense coordinator for Coach Hollenbach before he was the head. He took over as the head coach at Southerton and a math teacher at Penridge. And 
another another give up the middle. Number 27, Bra Braden Porter on the carry. Braden Porter's carry once again. Gets about six yards, maybe seven. It's going to be second down and eight. So we have a second and eight, and we have about 4.53 left in the first quarter. Southerton's driving. It's second and eight. And Kutzler's back in the shotgun. Got guys moving all over the place and shifting all over the place. What is this, Monday Night Football? <laughs> Little buck sweep. Got a tackle, Rams. Got a tackle. Mm -hmm. Nice third down off tackle yeah, by Jalen White. It's a little cross buck type yeah, play, and uh, they uh, they got to the got through that that post on the edge there, and got a nice little run. Third down and two. So it'll bring up the. We got a little stoppage here. Looks like we have an injury. Yeah, number three, Travis Washington's down. Travis is getting back up. He's a little shaken up. Well, you know, Scott Travis is a very Oh. He's looking at Wilkes as a possible place to go to school, study business, and play some football. Is there anybody you know that went to Wilkes University? Wilkes University. Ah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Tee yourself up pretty good on that one. So we got a third and two. We got to give up the middle. 27. Looks like he's going to get the first down by about a yard. Braden Porter off the left side. So last last week's game ended about 9:40. Uh, this game's on pace to end probably about 8:15. It's gonna be like a men's basketball game up here uh, at the Ridge. You got a little motion here. Another give trap. up the middle. Nice tackle by Hartzell yeah. and uh, looks like Mossbrook possibly. Nope, in. Bobby Croyle in there playing some defense. That was a six-yard gain. Mr. Ott, this defense is going to uh, have to make some adjustments here. The, uh, yeah. the Indians are running the ball uh, methodically down the field. They've, they've had the ball for six, at least six minutes. The clock keeps moving. Well, you've, known, you've played enough football to know it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, until you get inside the 20, Mr. Hagen. Absolutely. That's where the money is made. Absolutely. So another, another trap give up again. the middle. And he's loose. The, uh, the offensive line for Saturn is doing a great job blocking the defensive linemen. They're trapping them and, and getting staying really low, firing off the football. Braden Porter, number 27. He's a 5'10", 180-pound junior. He's, he's working in the middle of that defense. He's taking some hits, and he's bouncing off some people. Right now, the Rams aren't wrapping up and finishing their tackles. So Satterton is going to have a first down and 10. There's 2.35 left in the first quarter. They're sitting on the 18-yard line. We got another run up the middle, and that's number seven, Jalen White. On the carry? Yeah, look, look, carry. Jalen's doing a great job following his guard on that pull, on that trap trap play. Uh, looks like uh, Southerton brought in a couple of extra offensive linemen. This is going to be interesting. They are going to just ground and pound. Ground and pound against the Rams. They think that uh, their, their, line, their angle blocking and, and traps are going to uh, make a big difference. They're coming up in a... Wow, look at this. This is a little old CB West stack left up. <laughs> and uh, just going to ground and pound. Yeah, Jalen White off the left side. Said he's running off that left side behind left guard Luke Pollock. Luke's a 5'11, 196 pound junior. Uh, Going to bring in number 92, I believe it is, place kicker Nick Haynes they, for they, the extra point. They ran the ball at will over their left side on, on that drive, Scott. They did. Wait, 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 wait. Looking for the extra point here.
Kutzler gets the hold down. And that's good. So Satterton jumps out to a 7-3 lead here with 50 seconds left in the first period. The first half of an interview that I conducted today um, with Penridge uh, alumni, Lewis Riddick. Uh, Lewis is uh, the color analyst with Brian Greasy and Steve Levy on Monday Night Football. Uh, so I spent about 45, 50 minutes on a uh, Zoom call with Lewis today. Um, and uh, and uh, we, we spent uh, the first half hour or so just talking like uh, two old football fans and players would do. Uh, then we conducted about a 10-minute interview. So you're going to see the first half of that uh, right at the end of the band performance. And then... Um, and then you will see uh, the culmination of that after the game has been completed. We apologize that we are having a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, we're not sure what's going on with the connection, but uh, we are hardwired in, uh, so we're not 100% sure what's going on. All right, Nick Haynes, the kick here for Satterton. He's a 5'10", 177-pound senior. Short little kick. Looked That's like Braden, Braden Lanher. Yep. Braden takes it out to about the 32 yard line. Where the Rams will take over first and 10. Again, we apologize uh, that some tef technical difficulties are going on. Uh, Jalen White did score a touchdown. We, we found out that uh, you may not have seen that at home. Uh, we're trying to work out the technical glitches right now. We have our crack production staff from Penridge TV working on that. Dylan Powell's with a nice gain, about six yard gain. So the, the Rams are moving the ball too. They just stalled a little bit when they got down inside the 10. And that's been the difference in the game right now. Southerton cashed in when they were inside the 20. And Penridge had to settle for a field goal. So we're running. This is probably the last play of the, of the first quarter. There's 15 seconds left in the first quarter. Croyle in the gun. Fuchs trades over to the right side. Gives to Hartzell. And he's met immediately and tripped up. Shane Hartzell with a four-yard gain. It looks like it's going to be a first down. And the clock will stop momentarily until the ball is set. And that will be the end. in there. They, you saw Satterton. They weren't trying to, tr they weren't trying to tackle Hartzell high. Absolutely not. <laughs> they were going low. They knew how to get him down. So at the end of the first quarter, the Indians of Satterton, seven, and the Penridge Rams, three. So, um... I got a trivia question for you tonight. All right, Pennsylvania position. Six of those came from the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. Can you name those six quarterbacks? How about Dan Marino? Okay, you got one. How about Johnny Unitas? That's two. How about um, Joe Montana? Three. I think he went to a pretty good school. Um, that's three. Give me a hint. Um, let's see, who'd you say? You said... Unitas, Montana, Marino. You got uh, Hall of Famer that went to four Super Bowls but came to the right side. He's hitting Ooh. spins. Nice little game for CJ. He has about four yards off the right side. He's out to the 49-yard line. What do you got? What else? Um, you got... Uh, I got two left. Yep. You, uh, you didn't get Broadway... Uh, Broadway Joe. Broadway Joe from Beaver Falls. Uh -huh. And then this one was probably the oldest of them. Uh, I think he wore a number in the 60s, but was a quarterback. Not Y.A. Tittle, was no, it? No, not Y.A. Tittle. Scott Otto Graham. Nope. No? Maybe I'm thinking the wrong guy. It would be uh, a, a Raider. Okay, a little give to Powell. He's got running room off the left side. He's got a first <laughs> down, and he's in the Stoward <laughs> He's in the Stoward territory. <laughs> He's down to the 47-yard line where the Rams will continue this drive first and 10. I think he was an original uh, Oakland Raider. Daryl LaMonica? Nope. I give up, man. 
That would be George Blanda. Okay, I wouldn't have got that. Ah, yeah, from Youngwood, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. All six of those guys from Western PA. Give up the middle to Ferg. He's got a big hole. Ferg with a nice uh, seven-yard gain. Tough day for the Irish today. Paul Horning. Yep, I, I saw that. I knew you'd be a little uh, saddened by that. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got a second and three, and Ferg is lined up right behind Bobby Croyle. He brings Powell's in motion, gives it up to the middle to Ferg again. Ferg, another big run for first down. That's a nice, that's a nice carry. He actually may have missed the hole there, but I think he uh, did, yeah. But he still got four yards, got a first down for the Rams. Yeah, I think Jake Tarburton took his man down, and I think Ferg kind of cut it out between the guard and the tackle instead of the guard and the center, he, he would have had a nice little run. But he did get a first down, and the drive is continuing, and that's a big thing right now. Just move this, keep the sticks moving, and then the toss is off the left side for Pals. Ooh, nice little run nice by little Dylan. Run. Yep. What did you see over there, Mr. Hagan? Well, I saw that sweep coming, a little kick out on the end, and then Dylan kicked it up in between the, the tackle and the end. Did you happen to see who kicked it out? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. So we got a second and five, and we are not seeing a lot of a lot of passes here. That's for Shoemaker lined up behind, and it looks like it's give to CJ up the middle, and he's hit after a short gain. It looks like the Rams were in motion there, and uh, they got the benefit of the doubt on that. You can hear some sound on people well, they, screaming. They did have two guys go in motion, but they both reset for a second, and then the, the back went in motion again on that, that uh, zoom motion. So it's okay. That's legal, as long as they're not moving forward. All right, third down and a long three for the Rams. He's got Kacerik down here. On the sideline by the 30, and it's a give up the middle to Hartzell. Hartzell's Ooh. hit, and he's wrapped up by number 33. Wow. We're going to have 430 pound defensive end slash linebacker who just wrapped Hartzell up textbook, two arms around his legs, and Hartzell went down. All right, the Rams are going to go for it on fourth down from the 30-yard line. They need to get to the uh, 26 to get this first down. The way that first drive was for uh, the Indians, they're definitely going to want to uh, get this first down. So Crow's back to throw. Oh, uh, incomplete. Well, we All right, for Adam Mossbrook. Yeah. I think he would have been short of the first down anyway. Yeah, I think that would have been close. So Satterton's going to take over here, first and 10, on their own 30-yard line with 7 minutes and 41 seconds left. They're up 7-3. to three. Mr. Hagan, here's my question. Will we see a pass from Satterton here in this drive? Uh, I think if the Rams get them into a third and long situation, they probably will. But uh, if they continue to matriculate the ball down the field, uh, they are not going to need to throw the ball. Trap, another give there up the middle. There we go. For a short game, maybe one just falling forward about a half a yard. Looked like 63 Ryan Gallagher. He's a freshman. He's a defensive tackle. He's 5'9", 180 pounds. And we know he's related to Coach Gallagher. We're just not exactly sure how, right? Yeah, I think uh, he said it's his cousin's son. Okay. Uh, that Gallagher clan, I'm sure, uh, widespread around the area. Nice stop. Shane Hartzell in on the tackle there. All right, so here's that third and long. So maybe we'll see Kutzler attempt his first pass here of the game. All right, we got third and eight. One of his wide receivers just went out of the game. 17, Kyle Robb. Now he's four wideouts, two on each side. 
He's back to throw. He's got a man wide open. Oh, that's going to be close. I Looks like it's going to be a first here down. Giving him the first down, which I think he did get. Nope, the official on the far side is not. Wow. He definitely caught the ball in first down territory. He was hit. He was driven back two yards by the Penrich player. And it looks like they are giving him the first down, Scott. Yeah, that is uh, that is a first down. Our fans are a little unhappy about that, but uh, he got to the sticks. He did his job on that double comeback on the outside and uh, did exactly what he needed to do. He went to the yard marker, went a yard be behind it, and then came back and got the ball. So they come Saturday in this double stack up, just going to ground and pounds. Whoa, he's still up. He's gone. Yep, he is. Looks like Jalen White down the right sideline. Looked like about a 60-yard run down the right side for a touchdown for Satterton. It's hard to see, but I think it was Jalen White. All right, so that, that play actually started on the inside. Jalen White, White got stuck in traffic and then bounced it out. The uh, defensive end or corner on that side lost contain and, and he was gone. So Nick Haynes on for the extra point. Puts it right down the yep, middle. That's good. And Satterton jumps out to a 14 to 3 lead with six minutes to go here in the second quarter. So the uh, PIAA District 1 district playoffs began in 1992, Mr. Ott. Uh, it was a 4A tournament up until 2015. Then PIAA expanded to go to a six class system. Uh, so since 2016 to the present day, it's a 6A championship. Uh, only nine teams have won the district championship uh, since 1992. Uh, North Penn comes in with the most with seven championships. Central Bucks High School West behind them with five. Coatesville with four. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then you have Ridley, Neshaminy, Pensbury, and Downingtown. Regular Downingtown before they split each had two. Plymouth White Marsh, Upper Dublin, and Downingtown West, who was last year's winner, uh, all with one. The, uh, the Suburban One League has won 18 of the district championships that we've had. Uh, eight have come from the Chessmont League and two from the Central League. Uh, four, four teams uh, that have been 4A or, or 6A have gone on to win state championships. CB West has won uh, three of those since the district playoffs began. Downingtown won in 96, and Chamonix in 01, North Penn in 03. Okay, Haynes with the kick. It's a short pop-up. Looks like Braden Lanher. Nope, Dylan Powell. Dylan Powell's my bad. Dylan gets it out to the 40. All right, so at this point in the game, Bobby Croyle is 0 for 2. Uh, he threw for 298 yards last week on uh, several long plays. Um, and uh, really haven't needed him to throw long. But uh, Rams are... Uh, Coming in, Hartzell's got about uh, 20 yards rushing. Dylan Powell's about 45 yards rushing to this point in the game. Jack Ferguson has 11. C.J. Shoemake has six. Southerton is right, is right now, they're tackling fundamentally, and they're doing a nice job of wrapping. He actually lost yardage on that play. Maybe that looks like they gave, gave it to him maybe, maybe one yard. Right. This It'll is uh, second and nine. This is uh, something a little uncharacteristic right now. The Rams' offensive line is is struggling. Um, they're they're seeing a traditional four three defense from Southerton. Yeah, Southerton's We're, got some big cats out there. That defensive end, Brock Staley, he's two hundred and eighty six pounds. Yep, they're playing uh, the one technique on the nose guard. Um, so we got to give. Looks like uh, on the right side yeah, it's uh, Braden, Braden Lanher. And yeah, he gets about four yards, so it's going to bring up a third and five, third and six, maybe. Yep. Looks like a throwing down for the Rams. Yeah, the Rams are going to need to uh, run a little bit outside and spread this defense out. Um, Bobby Corolla has not run the ball yet, uh, so 
Uh, actually, he has run twice. I apologize for seven yards, but those were not necessarily designed runs. So he's got Joey Casare up top. So a little, little fake. He's looking. Yeah, there's the pass is completed. Kachadi. First down. That's a, that's a nice little throw to a sophomore tight end there. Yep. Phil's uh, got nice, nice size and, and, and some nice speed. Ran a nice little out route. That's something we haven't seen much of uh, since the CB East game. Tyler Fuchs caught a touchdown pass. Uh, probably about a 25-yard pass wide open in the end zone. We haven't used the, the tight end too, too much. All right, first down for the Rams at the 48. Powell switches sides. Bring Hartzell in motion across the right side. Fake the Pals. He's going to follow Hartzell. Bobby, and Bobby gets loses four, maybe five yards. Right. I'm going to apologize. I said a 4 3 defense. It's actually a 4 4. It's my fault. I missed that, that outside linebacker on the top side. Thanks to uh, former coach Rosenberger for picking out my faults. All right, so we got a second and 13. We've got three and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Hemorrhage has the ball on their own 49. Two wideouts down here to the wide side of the field. Pruill takes the snap and he's looking to throw. Now he's running right. And that was a heck of a tackle. Yep, by the one like yard loss. Safety. Jacob Horton, he's a 5'11", 205 pound senior. He came so, flying from the middle of the field. Yeah, so uh, they're, they're going to roll up and, and realize that Bobby uh, is probably not going to throw the ball when he's on the run like that. Uh, so they got single coverage on the wide receivers and they're okay with that. Uh, they're going to bring that safety up for, for to play the run. So we got a big play here. We got a third and 14. Henridge is on their own 48. Burrow's in the shotgun and takes a snap and he's rolling left. Oh, and he's hit as he throws short. It and might be intercepted. So it's inter intercepted by number nine, Sean Hervey. He's a scored a lot of points against an extremely athletic Coatesville team. Uh, so Rand's got to find a stop here so that there's no more points on the board before first half ends. Yep, so we have 228 here in the first half. And Southerton takes over on their own 44 yard line. First and 10. We have a whistle and I think we have a timeout by Southerton. Yep, timeout by Southerton. All right. At Upper Bucks Orthopedics at Grandview Health, we keep you moving from athletes to weekend warriors. Our orthopedic sports medicine uh, team is dedicated to helping you be your best. Learn more at gvh.org slash ortho. That's a shout out to our uh, stadium sponsor, Grandview Health. Um, they've been a sponsor uh, for the last at least four years here at the stadium. This uh, Hellman Track and Field Center has been here since 07 uh, as a, uh, an all-turf uh, field and six-lane track. You're doing shout-outs, Mr. Hagan. How about a shout-out to Coach Audrey Anderson? Woo! How about her? And the Penridge Lady Rams are winning a District 1 championship last night. Yeah, back-to-back. -back. Ladies played very well. They... Uh, we're going to get the winner of Parkland against Archbishop Bryan, and uh, they'll play home Tuesday night in the semifinals. I think I like Bryan in that game. Wow, another big Jalen run by White. Jalen White. Yeah, again, we uh, apologize for any technical difficulties we're having. Uh, we're not exactly sure. The, the uh, student production team is working very hard to uh, try to fix it. All right, first down. Another give to White, and he is hit instantly in the hole. It looked like Hartzell. He was hit hard. 
And he was hit instantly right in the hole. Hearts will fill. Second down and 10 at the 42 with uh, clock counting down at 146 remaining in the first half. So Kutzler's back in the shotgun. He's rolling, rolling left. He throws his first pass of the Incomplete. game. Incomplete. And it is dropped by number 17, Kyle Robb. Kyle Bob, I said Rob. Sorry about that, Kyle. So big play here, Scott. We're bringing up third and 10. You got to get a stop and make something happen offensively, that's for sure. The scoreboard says that both teams have two timeouts left, and I think that is correct. That is. So we have a third and 10. And Kush was in the shotgun. He has backs on either side of him. Snap, and here comes Machadi. A little slant to 17. Ooh. It's going to be complete, but uh, I think that's going to be short. Kyle Bob, and I think he is marked a yard short, which is going to bring up a fourth and one. Yep. There's no doubt about it. Coach Gallagher is going to go for it. Not even a second of hesitation. Yep. And they're keeping the two wide receivers in. So I would watch for a quarterback run or handoff. There we go. Up the middle, and he has a first down, and then a little bit more even. Yeah. He's down to about the 31 or 32 yard line. Yeah, Jalen White's been very impressive tonight. Not only did he have the, uh, they they not only did have that long run, but he's had a number of short little runs getting free off that first level. White again off the right side. He's got some running room. Then Hartzell shows up and puts him on the ground. Right now, the challenge is there's 45 seconds left. So how is Coach Gallagher and Southerton going to manage the clock? They're at the 27-yard line, and we're under. I would watch Kyle Bob Long here. Nope. Oh, it's Jalen White again. He's hit immediately this time. And I think Coach Gallagher's yep. calling for a timeout with 29 seconds left here in the first half. Yeah. I, I almost think that they are in field goal range. Um, watching a little film and seeing their kicker, he has a pretty strong leg. Uh, but I, I'm sure Coach Gallagher wants to try to stick one in the end zone here, especially right at the end of the first half. And then he will get the bell of check special because they will get the ball to start the second half. So. Henridge really has to try to keep him out of the end zone yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You got to stop him here so that uh, you can uh, get a stop in the first uh, first series of the second half. All right, Mr. Ott, who do you think the most famous Souderton grad is? Tommy Dowdy. Well, I know he's your buddy from Wilkes, but uh, I'd have to go with Jamie Moyer. Jamie pitched for uh, 26 seasons in Major League Baseball. I think he's uh, probably close well, to maybe 16. for you it's Jamie Moyer. For me, it's Tommy Dowdy. <laughs> there you go. All right, back to that live action. Puts a screen. It's going to be a screen. A screen. He's, it was snipped out, so he's going to yep. tuck it and run. And yep. Nice play by the senior to get out of bounds. And stock the oh. puck, and there's a flag down over there. And my guess is going to be a, a late hit on Penridge out of bounds. So they're going to get closer to the goal. Yep. When I first met Tommy D, first thing he said to me is, where are you from? I said, I'm from Philly. And I said, where are you from? He goes, I'm from Philly, too. I said, what neighborhood? He said, Souderton. I said, Souderton? <laughs> I'm trying to think, what neighborhood is that? What parish is that? Yeah, yeah. It's Philly's not yeah, Souderton. The, the Chalfont I grew up in is not the Chalfont area that you uh, grew up in down there in, in northeast Chalfont Philadelphia. Chalfont Playground and legend John Curry, legend of Chalfont Playground, good man. So we have a first and ten, well, first and first and nine from the nine. Satterton has four players down to the left side. Kutzler's rolling that way. There's a flag. That's going to be a hold, and that touchdown pass is coming back. So touchdown to Kyle Robb, but that's going to be a hold yeah. on Satterton, and that's coming back. Yeah. I got a vote uh, came in over the phone lines for Book Myers, a running back in the uh, 
early uh, 90s for Saturn. It was a heck of a running back I played against him. Um, yep, we do have a hold against the Indians. That's a, that's a huge penalty. That's a 10 yard penalty. Uh, so that's going to take him back. Wow. 24 yard line? 23 yard line. Okay. So uh, it's going to be first and goal from the 23 in 19 seconds. Uh, the Indians have one timeout remaining in the first half. So Kutzler's in shotgun. Here comes Lachati. He's going to the right side. It's well overthrown. Yep, well overthrown. Took only five seconds off the clock. Yeah, I guess you could go with Coach Moeller as being one of the most famous uh, Saturday grads. When the band stops playing, it's it really quiet in the stadium. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, here we go. Second and 23. It's under center. Watch the draw. One step. Quick slant. Tackle. And I think Sallerton's going to wind this down and call a timeout yep. here. Absolutely. Their third and final timeout of the first half. Coach Gallagher's got a decision to make. He's got to have to run something that's going to get out of bounds quickly. Um, and that way he can uh, get the field goal unit on or try to go into the end zone. He's only got a, about 13 yards to go. So again, uh, halftime, we're going to start the uh, interview that I did today with uh, Lewis Riddick from ESPN and Monday Night Football. Uh, it was a great opportunity for, uh, for us uh, to have a conversation today and then uh, stick with us after the uh, trophy presentation tonight. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll talk, uh, talk some football and what it was like to be a Penridge Ram back in the late 80s, mid 80s. Uh, talked about Quake Town Thanksgiving rivalry. So they are going to try to kick it here, Scott. All right. So it's on a 13. So 10 is 23, and 7 is about a 30 yard field goal. He's got the distance. Yep. And it's it good. splits the uprights, and Thank Satterton you. takes a 17 to 3 lead here at Penridge Hellman Field with four seconds left. This is the lowest offensive output by the Rams so far this season. Yeah. Another great player that Saturn had in recent memory would be Jake Metz, played for the uh, Buffalo Bills and uh, played in the Arena League with the Philadelphia Soul, part of their national championship team. Would like to give a little shout out to um, to uh, Stacia Rootlinger and uh, her good friend Josh, who's in the PA National Guard, 28th Infantry. Uh, he's watching in the tower tonight over in the Middle East. Uh, thank you, uh, as we talked about earlier, to Absolutely. all the veterans. Absolutely, thank you for your yep. service. Thank you, Josh, and uh, hopefully uh, you stay safe and uh, we get you home soon. Tomorrow night, or actually tomorrow afternoon, I think three o'clock, the Rams boys soccer team playing for a district championship at the Chamonix. Um, they've been rained out because they're one of the few teams in Pennsylvania that has grass. Um, so they've been rained out the last two days and uh, you know they're gonna uh, try to play and, and get that game in and uh, hopefully bring home another district championship in soccer. All right, here we go. Four seconds to go in the half. It's a little pooch kick. And it's Powell's, and he's hit, and he's taken down around the 41-yard yep. line. And that's going to end the first half. With the score. The score is Satterton, 17. Penridge, three. Whew, that was an interesting first half, Mr. Ott. I'm sure we're going to get some time to calculate the yard.
welcome to the Penridge Saturday and Halftime Show here for the District 1 6A title game. Uh, we have a special guest with us today, uh, Mr. Lewis Riddick, uh, 1987 graduate of Penridge High School. You may recognize him as a color commentator on Monday Night Football with uh, Brian Greasy and Steve Levy. So uh, welcome, Lewis. How are you today? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. This is, this is cool to be here. This is a big moment. We're in the middle of a big football game here. I mean, that... This is pretty cool in the in the history of Pembroke football, for sure, for sure. No doubt. First time we're ever playing for a district championship, um, and it happens to be against our rivals on the other side of County Line Road. Yeah. Um, it's not the old days of Saturn Stadium and, uh, and Papa Yoder from back when you played, but this is the 90th version of this game. Uh, the Rams have won 48 of those, looking for their 49th victory tonight. But uh, do you just want to give us a, a little bio on uh, what you've been doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been doing a lot. I mean, it, it's been a, it's been a wild road since my time, you know, at Penridge, uh, great memories there, obviously, you know, I've since graduating there in 87 and going on to Pittsburgh, playing in the pros for seven years, being in front office of the NFL for 12 years, and then being at ESPN since 2013, it's been, it's been an interesting career path for me. Um, it's obviously culminated in the pinnacle of broadcasting as far as I'm concerned, as far as doing Monday Night Football. I think everybody is aware of just how iconic that brand is. Everyone, you know, from children to adults have great memories of, or have some kind of memory of, of Monday Night Football if you're a sports fan. You know, I remember my days when I was a child, you know, when Monday Night Football used to be on ABC and it came on at 9 o'clock p.m. begging my dad to let me stay up to at least halftime, I wouldn't make it past the quarter, but I would stay up and, and watch Howard Cosell and Frank Gifford and Don Meredith. So to be doing that now, is that- <laughs> What's your favorite? All right, we're back here at Hellman Field. Satterson takes the first or second half kickoff. And they're going to take over first and 10. Oh, looks like the official, I'm sorry, the 36 yard line. We uh, again apologize for te technical difficulties during halftime. Uh, the internet has been going in and out, even though we're hardwired in. All right, but we think we got it figured out. We're ready to go. Here we go. So Kutzler fakes right, toss left to White. White scampers out of bounds. That's the same play they started the game with. Yep. So our halftime stats, Bobby Coyle is one for four for 11 yards with an interception rushing. Dylan Powell's 54. So Here we go. Second and 10, no gain on that play. Second and six, actually, they didn't change it. White, another big hole up the middle. He has a first down. He's out to about the 49-yard line. Yeah, the Rams need to. Uh, I thought they would have made some really good adjustments at halftime. They're obviously angling and, and going in uh, the direction of the trapper, and uh, they're getting big holes right up the middle. Left tackle for Southern is playing a heck of a game right now. There's Hartzell meeting the, meeting the run right in the hole for no gain. Yeah, so, sometimes what happens is they're playing a wing T defense, or excuse me, offense. Defense gets too much penetration on field, and they're just cutting right behind it, and they're not even able to make it, make any kind of play. Um, you know, uh, the Rams should uh, get to their one yard depth and then find the football uh, attacking the, the block that's coming on the down block. So we got a second and 10 for Satterton. Kutzler's under center here. White's in motion. Toss right to White. Ball, ball, ball. The ball. Rams ball. Ball's on the ground. Rams and I think ball. it was here number, we go. number 63, Ryan Gallagher on the recovery. Yep, he's going to take that to Thanksgiving dinner. All right, here we go on the replay. It's going to be a toss to the right. The ball is going to be on the ground. On the ground recovered by Ryan Gallagher. That, that is the break that the Rams needed to start the half. 
they got some good news too. It looks like Travis Washington's back in the ball game. That's that's great news. Travis is banged up. Here we go. Krill uh, takes it. Hartzell. He's up the news gone, baby! Yep. Jay Hartzell, 47 yards. Touchdown! That's the excitement we need here at the helm. It's funny, Satterton came out and ran the same play they started the, fir uh, the first half with in the second half, and Penridge did the same thing. They ran a little wildcat. Hartzell ran right up the middle. Ran right up the middle behind Eli Cantor and Joe Rendon and Danny Fish off the right side. Wildcat formation with Hartzell behind, uh, behind the center. And Shire's kick is up. That is good. good. That's good. So, with 10.39 remaining in the third quarter, we have a new ball game. Satterton is up 17 to 10. Little momentum to break the Rams' need. They ran a little toss. Satterton ran a little toss right. The toss looked like it was a little behind White, but he tried to catch it one hand, I thought, instead of trying to secure it with two hands. Ball was on the ground, and freshman nose tackle Ryan Gallagher pounced on it. And in one play, Shane Hartzell, the senior, the Villanova commit, dashed the length of the field for a touchdown. Yeah, believe it or not, it was 50 yards shorter than his touchdown last week, but uh, he uh, he got right up in there and, and took off. All right, kickoff for the Rams. Ball's on the ground. Stay in your lanes, stay in your lanes. There we go, tackle inside the 25. The ball's loose ball again. Ball. And no, Satterton ball. Saturday. So the ball was out. It was on the ground, but the official ruled Satterton ball. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is a whole new ball game. Defense has got to play tough on this series. Get a stop. Get a stop and uh, get out of this. Okay, so Southerton is backed up. They are at their own 17-yard line. With 10.34 left here in the third quarter. And Kutzler's under center. Give straight Brad. ahead. Oh, he's got a big hole. Looks like Braden Porter. They run that play effectively the entire first half, Scott. Yep, that is the uh, the base play out of the wing tee is that trap. Uh, guard comes down, everybody else blocks, blocks down, guard kicks out, uh, kicks out the wide tackle, and uh, they've been off to the races. Again, that's about they cannot get too much penetration defensively. They gotta get one foot. Uh, we used to teach it to uh, get to the heels of the offensive lineman and then uh, get low so you're fighting off that down block. So another give, same place, di different side. Looks like Penridge is a little more effective this time. Right, so the Rams have switched up their defense. They're making Mr. Ott really happy. They've gone to that condensed front and they're playing the old Buddy Ryan 46 defense where the guards and the center are both covered. Uh, so they're trying to really block out that trap, let the uh, defensive ends crash down with the corners rolling up on the outside and let Phil Pachotti and uh, Shane Hartzell and Logan McGowan make plays inside inside the, the front eight. Get the white off the right side. Oh man, they Jake Tarburn had him in the backfield, but he still gained about three yards. It's gonna be third down and about five for the the, the big red. So the official spots the ball right around the 39 yard line. It's gonna be a five. Crowd's starting to make a little noise. They're feeling like they're gonna get, get the Rams back in this game. The band is playing through their third quarter break. We got a motion to the left side. Kutzler under center. Trap. Gives the trap the quarter again. Got him. It's gonna be a 
He's, fourth down. He's right at the marker, and the one official is singling oh. first down. Wow, that was a uh, generous, generous spot. I actually disagree, Mr. Hagen. I thought he had it. Nah. But it's interesting, though. It doesn't really matter what you or I think. No. Those guys out there with the uh, black and white hats are the only ones that matter. So Bichotti's playing the nose right now in this stack up. <laughs> the only thing that concerns me is uh, getting through the first level just like that. If you get through the first level, you're you're getting uh, a bunch of defen defensive backs in on that tackle. And uh, Jalen White has been putting moves on people all night. It's going to be second down in about one. Yeah, it looked the like Indians. they had like a seven or eight man front there. Yep. Now, that stack, that double stack where they have a, a fullbacks who are offensive linemen lined up between the behind the tackle and the guard or tackle on the, uh, the end of the tackle. Uh, they're just, they're playing at you and they want to see how you're going to do coverage. They're going to call the play at the line of scrimmage. Oh, they're coming back inside trap. Nice play. Got to get him down. The Rams are not tackling. They are not grabbing jerseys. They are just, just bouncing off of the running backs. That was a three yard loss that turned into a first down for the Indians. All right, so Salterton has a first down. It's first and 10 on the Penridge 46-yard line. Seven minutes, 25 to play here in the third quarter. Salterton leading 17-10. Little give up the middle. Oh, that's a great run. Yep. He stayed low. C.J. Shoemake tried to make that tackle. Jacob he, Horton, he's ran, a... Ran right through him, Jake Horton. He's a 5'11", 205-pound captain for Satterton. Tough run. Running behind that left tackle, Ben Morawski. He's, Ben's doing a heck of a job tonight. They're also putting that tight end over there, 83. Gabe Epps, 6'5", 231. They got some great size over there on that left side. Now they line up two fullbacks behind the line of scrimmage. And, and the nope, quarterback is going to be a quarterback run to the left side. He gets a nice little pick up before he gets knocked out of bounds by it looked like Steven Rootlinger. Yeah, they're just playing outflank the defense right now. They're seeing how the defense is lining up. They're seeing that corner, CJ Shoemake, who is uh, not the most stout defense or defensive back rolling up on the corner. Uh, they know that they could take advantage of that. Uh, they put Braden Lanher in to try to solidify that corner edge. So second and six. Kutzler's back in the shotgun. White's motioning to the right side. Kutzler's Pass. rolling that way, looking to throw. He's looking for White. He's got White. He's got White out of bounds for a first down. He's guard line. Where it'll be first and ten for the, for the uh, Southerton Red. So here we are in the red zone. Uh, let's see uh, if the Rams can tighten some things up. They've been rolling in different defenders uh, the whole second half here, uh, trying to find a way to get this. Tim Yench is out wide, uh, playing over the, the wide receiver down low. Kutzler under center, takes the ball, trap. give up the middle, the trap again. He's It's gonna be a touchdown. Nope, nope, they're gonna stop the short. call him down to one. Wow. The carry down at the one yard line. So it, when you're playing a, against the wing tee, the, the linebackers have to read their keys. If that linebacker blocks down, they gotta they gotta fill that gap. And uh, right now the Rams are not doing a great job of that. As uh, the Indians without, you know, with that fumble, that's how the Rams got the ball back. But they have just been pushing the defensive line back. We have a timeout for an injured player. And when we did that, what was that, CB South game, Mr. Hagan? I told you football was an easy sport. <laughs> when the white basketball. shirts push the green shirts backwards, the white shirts win. And when the green shirts push the white shirts backward, the, the green shirts win. Yeah, I believe and, it is that easy. And right now, Satterton's offense and defensive lines, with the exception of that long run by Hartzell, are controlling this ball game. Absolutely.
Syverson playing sh player shaking up on the field. Looks like he's okay and he's walking off on his own power, which is good to see. So Satterton's going to have the ball first down at the one-yard line. 6.25 left here in the third. They're up 17-10. to 10. They're trying to seize the momentum back here. They've been winning it with the line of scrimmage and, and tackling on defense, and uh, the Rams need to uh, make a stop here. I would watch for a quarterback sneak. Yep, and he probably just rolled in. Yep, touchdown for the Indians. So with that touchdown, Satterton goes up 23 to 10. That'll bring on Nick Haynes for the point after. So we apologize with our technical difficulties there. To put that interview um, on the uh, Penridge website uh, with uh, Lou Riddick. Um, we know he might be mute. Right, okay, so we did run the interview, I apologize. But we will post that on the Federal Twitter and uh, and we will post it on the website at some point next week. It's a great interview for student athletes. It's uh, hopefully Penridge right here. They, they're down 24 to 10. They had kind of seized the momentum back and then Sallerton fumbled the kickoff. They, they, they pounced on it, but still they were at their 17 yard line. They were able to march 83 yards for a touchdown and take the momentum back and go up 24 to 10. Yep, still 18 minutes to go in this game. Uh, the Rams need to uh, score and uh, get a quick stop and uh, get back into this game at that at that, that time. You know, the, the Saturday's been doing short kicks, so the, the Rams have pretty much all their running backs and wide receivers um, at the, around the 30-yard line trying to uh, stop that short kick and. We'll see how uh, see how it goes here. I wouldn't put it past Ed Gallagher to uh, try a trick here in the <laughs> second half. Um, I don't know if he'll go with an onside kick at some point, but definitely we want to be ready for it. I will it. bet you a cheesesteak that this is not an onside kick. Okay, all right. Red peppers, green peppers, and onions, too. No, no, no. You can't do onions on a cheesesteak. Why not? No, no, no. Not acceptable. You're from Philadelphia. And then they kick it long. Let it go in the end zone. Yeah, there we go. I, you owe me a cheesesteak. When Joe Wade opens up that ram down in Percocy, yes, you're going to be buying. Month. You're going to be buying me the first cheesesteak. Yeah. Well, I, I'd be very happy to do that, Mr. Ott. Once we get to go down and visit the Ram, uh, you know, uh, the Perk is our hometown eatery, and uh, the big fans of the Rams, uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, the Ram coming to uh, to join us. Um, in, in sometime November, I hear. Uh, all right, so we have first and 10 from the 20. A little shotgun, again. Hartzell again. He's looking for a hole in an opening. And He's he gets about two yards. churning his legs, driving, picks up about two yards. It'll bring up a second and eight. Yeah, they only gave him one on that. So I think that play, obviously, they were looking for a big play uh, again. Out of Hartzell. Hartzell's going to come off the field. Uh, he is limping a little bit, which is not a good sign, but he has been playing on almost every play defensively, and uh, you know he's taking a little bit of a pounding in there. But And it is the end, middle of November, so these guys are uh, a little bit beat up after only six games. So Pals gets the ball off the left side, and he's met immediately. Yep. The, the Rams need to move towards some kind of counter or a trap themselves. They did that uh, to score the wing touchdown. They ran a trap play to Jack Ferguson uh, <coughs> last week against Coatesville. Uh, I think that uh, they need to put some misdirection into their offense uh, as well. At that was time. third and nine. Adam Mossbrook checks into the game. Adam had a big catch last week on fourth and five against Coatesville. So looks like Look for Bobby Crowell to throw the ball here. He has Mossbrook in the slot and Kaserik down wide. If Joey, yeah, there we go. Oh, is I even looking? Nope, it's a bad pass. Crow's pass, incomplete. It's going to be a fourth down. The Rams are going to so have to punt. Looked like Bobby thought he was going to run a post, and I think Joe ran an out, so they got their signals crossed a little bit. 
but we have a lot of football to play left. It looks like Sowerton has a man down right here. So the winner of the District 1 title, um, obviously, will uh, be able to celebrate for that for the rest of their lives. But uh, they do get a pretty tough task next week in the Eastern Final. Um, they get to play St. Joseph's Prep of uh, the Philadelphia Catholic League. Uh, they are currently uh, number three in the country. Uh, they have um, Jeremiah Trotter, Jr., who's a linebacker who's headed to Clemson University. They have a, a quarterback. Um, Blanking Their quarterback on. is McCord. Yeah. He's going McCord or McCord. He's going to Ohio State. Right. They yeah. have a wide receiver, Marvin Harrison's son, who's going to Ohio State. They have another wide receiver going to Duke. They have another wide receiver going to Temple. Um, you know. Yeah, they're a five-county all-star team, and uh, they recruit, uh, you know, even though PIAA does not allow recruiting, uh, they are a recruiting school, and uh, they uh, bring in kids from New Jersey, Delaware, Philadelphia, Bucks, Montgomery, and uh, Delaware County, and Chester County, and I know they've had kids from northern New Jersey, they move in with families, uh, so uh, things are um, a little different down there at St. Joe Prep, uh, but uh, put all that aside, they are a fantastic team. Of course, they have a Ryan guy running the show, Mr. Hagen. Yeah, yeah, well, that happens, um, but uh, Ryan did get in the playoffs this year, Mr. Ott, <laughs> after scoring six points in their uh, three or four games that they played, and went in with, with zero wins, but you know, they got into the playoffs, so you know, that's what it's all about. We were in a rebuilding year. We'll be back next year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ryan, actually, their basketball team is ranked second here in the preseason rankings. Coach Barron's has a lot of, a lot of guys back. Luke Yoder's coming back, and Colin Post is back, and Coach Barron's will look to win another conference championship this year. Boys should be starting up pretty soon. Yeah, they, uh, I believe they have tryouts starting some point next week, uh, get ready for a season. They're going to play uh, pretty much an all suburban one league schedule. Um, so the punt hits about the 45. It's fielded at the uh, 40. He's got a lot of room to run. And he's hit, cut it up the middle, and he is hit by number 85. <laughs> Tyler Drumboer. All right, so uh, in order for the Rams to stay in the game, they did not get a first down on that last series. They need to uh, definitely, definitely stop uh, stop Saturday here. Um, hopefully they can make the stop, not Saturday make the stop like they did on that fumble. Uh, but uh, right now, Coach Gallagher is um, running a, a very well-oiled machine uh, as they uh, are progressing to uh, a 14-point lead here in the third quarter. Pass. That's broken up. Oh, incomplete, incomplete. I think that Jayden was. Hartzell recovered that. I thought. I think he thought it was an intercept or a, excuse me, a catch and a fumble. Yeah, that was uh, broken up by 16. Tim Yencha. Tim's having a heck of a senior season. Absolutely. Making yes. a lot of plays over there. Interesting. Satterton came out on first down and threw the ball when they're running the ball down our throats. They may have done us a favor there on first down. Let's yep. take a look and see. Come out of double wing formation. Puts we'll back again. to pass again. They're He's trying run to run uh, now. They're trying to put this game in, in the box and uh, scramble for about nine yards there. Second down, or third down and one. Here comes the big boys. They're going to go to uh, their stack up offense and try to ground one in for first down here. All right, so we've got third and one, and you got to figure Southerton, if they don't get it on third down, they're going to go for it on fourth. And they run that CB West North Penn bunch set, and they give the ball up the middle. First down to Braden Porter. He's done a heck of a job running those little traps and, and dives up the middle. Running inside behind their guards, Nick Carrado, 5'10", 190-pound junior, Sean Barrera to center, 5'6", 230, and Luke Pollock, a junior, 5'11", 195. Those guys are doing some good work inside.
Kutzler under center again. They motion that bunch to the right side. Give again is the Porter, and he's hitting and rolling and bouncing and fumbling forward for five or six. Tell you what, these running backs are doing a nice job on contact, either spinning or pushing themselves straight arm and getting to the outside or even to the inside uh, to get another gain. You know, that was a, a, a no gain that uh, he, he spun out of and got four or five yards. Yep, so it'll bring up a second and five. Sabaton now on the Penridge 27 yard line, and we are under two minutes and 40 seconds left here in the third quarter. Kutzler under center. Gives off the left side. Looks like Sean McGoldrick, a six foot, 156 pound junior running back off the left side. It's to be third and one again. Scott, what would you do here on third and one? What would you do differently here? If you're Saturday, and I wouldn't do anything. If you're uh, Penridge, uh, I would definitely uh, slant heavy to the strong side. Uh, expecting uh, them to run to run here, so uh, coming towards the bench most likely. So it's the same give up the middle. Bobby Croyle with Bobby the touchdown. Bobby Croyle saves the touchdown. Yeah. Down, 11, Bobby Not after eight, About the 11 yard line. They are getting whatever they want off the left side. Yep. Absolutely. the day and age of the spread offense and, uh, and all that. You got two teams trying to <laughs> run the ball and you know, the Rams probably have about 140 yards rushing, but uh, uh, Saturday has 200 easily. And touchdown. that's gonna be a touchdown, yep. Scott, I couldn't see a number there. Was uh, that seven or? It was, I think it was nine. nine. Yeah. So nine is Sean Purvey. He's a five foot ten, 147 pound sophomore. Off left tackle. That's where their bread is buttered tonight. Yep. They are getting whatever they want over there. All right. So the 118 remaining in the third quarter. The Rams uh, are going to be behind uh, three touchdowns. And uh, Nick Haynes puts the extra point through, and Satterton is up 31 to 10. I'm not sure anyone saw this coming. I think uh, most people that I talked to um, thought this would be a close game. Um, you know, some people thought Penridge would win, some people thought Satterton would win, but I, I don't think anybody said um, it would be a three touchdown game with a minute and 18 left in the third quarter. I agree. So Let's see what kind of adjustments Coach Muller and his staff make here with a minute 18 left in the third quarter. As Fabian Patton is back inside the 10 yard line, but Southerton hasn't kicked the ball off deep all night. They won me a cheesesteak, they're kicking the ball off short. <laughs> and, and I would think they're gonna continue to do that. That's been effective for them. So a line drive off the left side. Hartzell. Yeah, it looks like Hartzell. And Hartzell gets a good return. Yeah, Rams are gonna get the ball at the 43 yard line with a minute 12 left in the uh, third quarter. Uh, this is an uphill battle. They're gonna score at least three touchdowns here in a short amount of time and, and get some stops defensively. Um, I think uh, 
Coach Mueller's boys have done a fantastic job all season. Uh, we've talked about real simple formula here, Mr. Hagan. Stop them, convert. Stop them, convert. Stop them, convert. And Absolutely. We're right back in the ball game here. Yep. A lot of football to be played. A lot of, a lot of plays still to be made. We got a toss outside to, to, Powell's. Powell's. Uh -huh. yep. And he's uh, across the uh, 45 yard line. Saturday and player just went down. It was a three yard game by Pals. It looks like it was number 77 that went down at the end of that play for uh, 77. That's their big left tackle. Six foot six, 342, Ben Morowski. He's actually playing really well for them up front on the offensive side of the ball. All right, big hand for uh, Big Ben there as he gets up and walks off the field. He's, he's walking gingerly. It looks like he, he's going to be okay. Yeah. So here we go. It's second and eight. Penridge ball on a 44-yard line. A minute eight left here in the third quarter with Satterton leading 31 to 10. Croyles in the shotgun. Brings a man in motion to the right side. Oh, it's Mossbrook. Looks like Mossbrook, he cuts it up. Gets to the 49. Adam's a 5'10", 155-pound junior. Talking to him this week in the hallway in school. Adam tells me he runs a 4'7", loves to play football. He's one of those kids that grew up going to Poppy Yoder Field and coming to Hellman and watching football and just loves being part of the uh, Penridge football program. All right, crucial four, third down here, third and long four for the Rams. Gives the pals off the left side. He's got some Good room job. out there, Scott. He's going to be gone. Yep. He's going to score. Oh, maybe not. They got an angle on him. Pervy. It looked like Pervy ran him down. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big play. Taken out the 15, so it's a 26 yard run. 26 yard run. It's going to be a first down for the Rams at the 14. Could be the last play of the third quarter unless we get one off here with 12 seconds. Yeah, it looks like they will. I think he was uh, out of bounds. So. Okay, okay, stop the clock. Yep. Okay, so Bobby's in the shotgun. Fakes it left. He's going to keep it himself. Get He's outside, got some room Bobby, get outside. outside. There he goes, cuts it back. Gets down to the nine. Five-yard game for Bobby. So that will be the last play of the first half, uh, third quarter. So Penridge is not going down easy. They are knocking on the door as we conclude the third quarter. Penridge has the ball. Yeah. Looks like the officials are spotting it at the seven-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. They're down 31 to 10 as we head to the fourth quarter. I was reading something this week, um, Mr. Hagan, about Coach Roth from Southern Columbia yes. um, has a chance to become the all-time winningest uh, yep. Coach in the state of Pennsylvania, yes. is, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh -huh. He, uh, Southern Columbia has been a dominant force from, uh, I think that's the town of Catawissa. Catawissa up there, up there by, uh, what's the name of that amusement park up there? Uh, Knobles. Knobles, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. They have been, uh, I think they're a two-way school. Um, they've been uh, state champs or in the state finals. Umpteen Forever, times. yeah. yeah. Um, and I think he's going to pass George Curry. He is. 
Yes. Yeah. My brother uh, Rich spent a year on George Curry's coaching staff at Wyoming Valley West. He said he learned so much about football from Curry. Um, just hard working, watching film, studying, and uh, always getting his players prepared. Yeah, George's son uh, is superintendent of schools up in uh, East Stroudsburg. Uh, school district where it's uh, East Stroudsburg and East Stroudsburg South. I mm -hmm. uh, met him last year. So here and, we uh, go, second and yeah. three from the seven. Croyle pitches left to Powell's. Powell's gets a block. He's in. He's got one man to beat, and he does. He got a nice block from Jake Tarburton. He ran behind Tarburton, cut outside, beat one man to the end zone. And still a ball game. There's yeah, still a lot absolutely. of football left right now. If Shire can get this up extra point through the uprights, it'll be 31-17. You know, with, with 11.55 to go, and it's still anybody's ball game. Yep. You know, you talked about some great coaches there, but uh, when you look at the uh, coaches nationwide with winning percentage, uh, this kid's got a strong foot. It, it, that, uh, Ten minutes south of here in Doylestown had a great coach that I played for. Uh, 326 wins, 42 losses, and a handful of ties. That's uh, an unbelievable record. In 33 years, he had uh, 40 losses. Uh, that's a pretty good winning percentage. So he has 326 wins. I can't even argue with Mr. Yeah. Hagan. Uh, but uh, he doesn't have the most in Pennsylvania, but he definitely has the best winning percentage in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, right up there with the uh, coaches at Ridley High School for uh, many, many years. When you have Randall Cuthbert playing for you, you win a lot of football games. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, in my conversations before the interview today with uh, Lewis Riddick, he talked about uh, you know how much uh, you know they, he took a beating from uh, his the CBOS teams over the years, and he was coached by Mike Pett and Mike Carey in an All Star game, and uh, how much he meant to learn from those guys as he went to the University of Pittsburgh. He uh, Lewis talked about the 1986 uh, we have legal procedure on the Rams. The 1986 Thanksgiving Day game up at Quakertown, uh, the Rams won that game his senior year, and he talked about uh, how. Um, it was like five, six deep on the around the fence up there at Alumni Field in Quakertown, and uh, he talked about uh, Joe Paterno was there and Mike Godfrey, who was the head coach at Pitt, where he went to play, uh, and Barry Switzer was the head coach at uh, Oklahoma at the time. They were all at the Penridge Thanksgiving game, <laughs> 1986. All right, so Southerton receives the kickoff about the 35. Let's get the ball. Nope. Just goes down at the 36-37 uh, yard line. Number nine, Shane, Sean Purvey yep. on a return. All right, so uh, we've said it a few times, but this is the key defensive series for the Rams. Uh, they need to get a quick three and out or force a turnover of some kind and uh, make something happen here to get the ball back to uh, cut it to a one touchdown lead uh, with plenty of time on the clock. Kutzler's in the, the shotgun. He's bringing Pervy in motion, but he's going right up the gut to White, who bounces it out to the left side. All right. And he's tackled at the line of scrimmage. Maybe one, right, Scott? Yeah, maybe, maybe one. That was a great job by C.J. Shoemake uh, controlling the edge there. And then Fabian Padin came up from his corner position and made the tackle. Uh, that, that's great team defense. They stretched that run nice. out. Uh, and kept them from turning Saw the Saw a little thing from C.J. this week that he had an offer to play at McDaniel. Yes. McDaniel College. Right up the middle again. And that's going to bring up a third down, a big play here. Yep. All right. The a little trivia question for you, Mr. Noise. Hagan. Yes. We'll hold off on it. Okay. Here we go. Third and six. Kutzler's in the shotgun. Little shovel, shovel pass. pass. Yep. No He's game. Be Maybe short. one. All right. That's the stop they were looking for. Let's see. It's going to be about third and five, or fourth and five, fourth and, fourth and uh, six. Probably four. All right, looks like the Indians are going to go for it. I think they're nope, going to punt the ball. Punt. All right, this is where you got to watch out for a fake. This is where uh, I believe Coach Gallagher is. and uh, Coach Dubik, the uh, special teams coach, uh, are going to you know watch the things. I'd watch that up back number 27, uh, Braden Porter, for a short snap and a rush. 
I believe this is Southerton's first punt of the game. It is. Okay. Ooh. There you go, Fabian gets it out over the 30 after it was almost blocked by Jake Tarbert. All right, so, so my trivia question was, uh, CJ had an offer to play at McDaniel College. What was McDaniel College's name before McDaniel College? They, ch they had a name change. Yeah, they're, they're called the Green Terror, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Kyle Myers from Penridge, or excuse me, from CB West I coach, went to Western Maryland College. Very good, Mr. Hagan. Yep. It's where okay. the uh, Baltimore Ravens used to hold their yep. training camp. So here we go with 10-11 left, left to play. First and 10 from the 32. Croyle in the shotgun, calls for motion, he's rolling right, he options it to the right, and Hartzell is hit immediately in the backfield for a loss by Braden Porter. Whoa, we got a penalty there. <laughs> we have a dead bow. Unsportsmanlike against the Rams. Mm. That's not helping the cause. Absolutely not. I couldn't see what happened. No, nah, I think Hartzell was out of bounds. Um, oh my God! That moment is ran back 15 yards. Yep. And Mrs. Muller is uh, right out in front of me here. She's getting a little hot to trot. She uh, she reminds me of the coach's daughter from uh, Remember the Titans. Uh, and the bad news for Penn Ridge, that, that's a post, put post down foul, and it's going to be second and 28. Yeah. So they lose the down, they lose 15 yards, and oh. now there's another penalty Why down on the play. So we got a legal procedure. Five more yards. Second and 32. So second, and they got to get the Dublin to get a first down. Well, Derek Queen's still open, so uh, we got a shot. What's your go-to at, at Duncan, or at uh, Derek Queen? Uh, go-to is the drive-thru, <laughs> and uh, usually it's picking up for my daughters and my wife. Once in a while, I'll get the uh, strawberry cheesecake. I'm not a big chocolate guy. Not a boy. So Croyle in the shotgun, he's rolling, he's throwing, he has a man open. He's got Hartzell. Looks like Hartzell, he's out. Out to the across 25. The, across the 25 yard line. Yeah, he just got, uh, got a good number there. I do not see a flag down. So we got that going for us. So it is third and 17. Last week we had a similar situation. They threw a pass out to the flat to Powell's. He made a big play on third down. Let's see what Coach Muller dials up here. He brings Ferguson in motion to the right. Pearl takes a snap. He's rolling to the right. He's thrown back across the Pichotti. Uh, and that was sniffed out immediately by number six. Winday Dawson, a five foot ten, 142 pound sophomore, and Penridge is going to have to punt with eight minutes and 25 seconds and counting here in the fourth quarter because it is fourth and 16. You can hear the Southerton coaches yelling, watch the fake, but I think on fourth and 16, backed up, I, I think they're going to kick it away, and they do. It's a good punt by Xavier Dantzler, backup quarterback. Pick it up. Yep. So Joey Kacerik downs it at about the Southerton 38-yard line. great to see so many of my uh, my good friends are uh, watching the broadcast tonight and 
having a little fun. Um, quote of the game, uh, Mr. Volberg, the music, music teacher over at uh, North Middle School, thanks for uh, that little shout out. Uh, I, uh, I'm getting text messages from uh, Greg Moylan. Uh, he was trying to call the offense from his home in, uh, in Hilltown. Your days are over. But uh, here we go. We got uh, stopped them on uh, first down for no gain. No gain to play. So we got them stopped for a no gain here. Second and 10. And the clock is ticking. We're under 7.30 to play here in the ball game. Satterton leading. 31 to 17. Second 10. Salmon out. Yep. Can you go get MJ? <sighs> How'd that happen? Uh, oh, wait. There we go. Sorry about that. Pulled the plug, not on Mr. Ott, but on the uh, <laughs> headphones there. <laughs> All right, so it's third down and nine. <laughs> okay. They put the two biggest guys in the stadium in the in the smallest booth up here. It's just <laughs> uh, it's actually roomy up here when it's just one of us, but uh, it's okay. So this is a huge, this is a huge play here, Mr. Hagen. It's third and nine. Does Coach Gallagher keep the ball on the ground and trust his defense? Or does he yeah. put it up in the air and try to pick up the first down? Yeah, I think he's got to uh, go with what's been going. Oh, they're going to roll out. He's rolling out. Berg. Oh, yeah. No gain. Actually, a loss of four on the play. It's going to be uh, It's going to be uh, fourth down. It's time to punt. Kutzler rolled to his right. He was looking. He had two receivers. They, looked, they both looked covered. Good job by the Penridge corners and safety. So he tucked it and ran. But he wound up losing about three yards. And Salatin is now going to punt it back to Penn Ridge. And Fabian Patton is back. He's been dangerous. Yep, um, yes. When he catches the ball, he is electric. He, had, he does have a lot of speed. Let's see if the Rams can get some pressure on the punter. It's an offensive lineman. It's a punter. Actually, a pretty good kick. All right. They're going to take their time and get as much clock. clock. Here we go. It's going to be uh, 529 remaining. It's going to be first down for the Rams at the 31-yard line. So Bobby Coyle threw for 300 yards last week. He uh, made some big throws in big situations, and I think we might have to see him open it up and, and throw the ball here. Penridge needs two scores in the next five minutes and 29 seconds, not to mention a stop somewhere along the line to, to get this game even. So Bobby's in the shotgun. He brings motion. He hands off the pals around the left-hand side. He gets about three. Yeah, great tackle there by number three, Jacob Horton for Southerton. Yep. I think Southerton will take that all day long. Yep. All right, we're going on our two receiver set. Adam Mossbrook just came in the game. Bobby's rolling right. He's looking for Mossbrook. He's got him. First down. Nope. Incomplete. Ah, he dropped it the last second. <laughs> it's going to bring up a third and six. I guess my question here, Scott, is this four down tire with 4.56 to go? You're down 14. You're on your own 35-yard line. If you don't pick it up here on third down, are you going for it? 100% of the time. Okay. You're down 14. You got to try to get this, get this going and get the first down. Curl takes the snap. He gives it to Powell's again. He's following Rendon. First down. Yep, and he's got the first down. All right, they got to put a little uh, pressure on this defense to get right back on the ball, get the ball, play in really quick, and get things going. Time is not on their side. I want to uh, say thank you to uh, PIAA uh, District 1 President, uh, Dr. Michael Barber, who's here tonight, along with the Executive Director, uh, Mr. Rod Stone, and uh, 
and Quirrell's going deep. Uh, incomplete. Little. And uh, Sean, Sean Kelly from the uh, the, the PIAA uh, District 1 as well. They're here to uh, give out the medals and the trophies at the end of the game uh, for the winning team. Um, no matter what the outcome is, this has uh, been a great season for both teams that are here tonight. Uh, Rams have never been to this point of a season. And, and the, the, the cherry on top is win or lose, uh, they still get one more game, uh, either against St. Joe Prep next week or on Thanksgiving at 10-15 at Quaker Town's Alumni Field. So Coral's in the shotgun. Uh, oh, incomplete. He was Almost looking for a slant. Salerton's safety stepped up, made a nice play on the ball. Yeah, it was a quarterback. It looked like their quarterback, quarterback. yeah. Um, Kutzler, I think the Coach Barons was texting me saying he was a basketball player. Um, he also plays basketball. Pretty good athlete back there playing the safety position. Many of the longtime Rams fans may remember Paul Kohler that used to come to the games with his megaphone and be yelling, we are, and the crowd would go Penridge. He's been watching at home tonight with his, uh, his wife, a Penridge graduate as well, and his father. Uh, the family's real close to Bobby Croyle and his family. Uh, so I know they've enjoyed these games watching because of uh, not able to be here. Bobby's throwing a ball deep. Oh, nice. Hey, actually, good job by Fabian uh, playing a little yeah. defense there to make sure that ball is not intercepted. So we can come to a fourth and 10 with 421 to go. This is pretty much the ball game. Yep. <laughs> Penridge does have all three timeouts left, so this is a big play. It is fourth and ten, and looks like Ed Gallagher is going to call a timeout and yeah, talk about this. He, he let Penridge come out. He let them line up. He saw what the look was. Um, he called timeout. He's been doing this a couple for a couple years. This is in his first rodeo. Um, Ed knows what he's doing. He, he wanted to take a look and see what play the Rams were going were gonna to set up in, what formation they were going to set up in, and then he called timeout, and uh, both coaches are talking to their side right now. Sort of uh, follow up from a couple weeks ago, we did a halftime interview with the Tarburton boys and uh, talked to Nick Tarburton uh, this week and uh, talked to him a little bit about his teammate, uh, Journey Brown, who had to medically retire from playing football uh, due to a heart condition and we talked about uh, you know how tough that is as a, as a young man to have to go through that. Doing a little research, um, Journey Brown, who uh, played at uh, Meadville High School, um, actually has the all-time state record for rushing yards in a game. Uh, he had against Dubois in, in 2015. He had 722 <laughs> yards rushing in one game. Uh, that's uh, You don't see that in, in a season for many. many I would want uh, to sub if I, if yeah, I got right? the 500. Come on, man. Yep. All right, here we go. Amazing. This is the biggest play of the game right here. Fourth and 10 from the 46-yard line. Coyle takes the snap. He's looking. He's getting a rush. He steps up. He looks like he's going to run. Uh, he takes a hit. Two yards short. And he's going to be taken down about two yards short of the first down. So yep. Satterton will take over with 4-12 left here in the fourth quarter. They're up 31-17. to And I think if they get one first down, they could cement this game and put it in the W column. But like I said, Penridge does have three timeouts left. Um, there is a, yep, there is a man down for Salerton shaking up right in front of their bench. I cannot see what the number is, so I'm not going to speculate.
So as we've talked about, the uh, winner of this game will go on to play St. Joe's Prep next week. And uh, if it is not the Rams, that's uh, number 27, Braden Porter. He just got up on the sideline. So nice hand for Braden on that tackle. Yeah, he's had a heck of a game running the ball up the middle. Yeah. Um, the Rams will play on Thanksgiving if they're not playing against St. Joe Prep next week. Uh, Southern has played uh, one heck of a football game tonight. We know there's still 4-12 to go, but um, you know we want to wish them, if they do hold on to this victory, we want to wish them the best of luck against uh, the uh, number three team in the country. So Penridge is stacking the box, and Southerton goes back to that left side. Goes back to Jalen White, and he has a, a, a very determined run and a, and a big pickup on first down. I'm going to say it's eight yards, so that will bring up a second and two or three. Clock continues to run. Southern's going to keep their eye on the back judge. He's giving them a 10 second warning at this point. He's got his hand raised. He'll start to count off when it gets under five. There's a whistle oh, blowing. Whistle. And it looks like Southern called a timeout. Yeah, they did. That was a uh, smart play by Coach Gallagher, so he didn't get a uh, delay game penalty there. So we're sitting at three minutes and 22 seconds left in the ball game. Southerton is in front. They're winning. They have a second and two from the Penridge 46 yard line. My guess is Penridge would have to sell out here and just bring the house yep. and try to get a tackle for a loss. Yep, use, they, uh, use their timeouts. They still have three. Uh, you know, uh, get a stop, get a timeout. Quarterback sneak. Yep, quarterback sneak. First down plus. Yep. Again, I want to uh, say thank you to uh, Grandview Health sponsoring our stadium, our beautiful stadium here at Hellman Field, um, home of the Penridge Rams. Uh, we uh, celebrated here last night with a victory by the girls' soccer team, 2 0 over Springboard. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, 3 o'clock, on the Chamonix YouTube channel. Uh, boys' soccer will be playing against the Chamonix for their district title. Uh, talking to District One representatives and uh, and the uh, the the media, they said that no team has ever, well, no school has ever taken three teams to a uh, district final in one season. Um, Abington basketball girls and boys won both the gold, the gold medal uh, in districts in 2018. Um, or 20, yeah, yeah, 2018, um, and uh, but that's been the most uh, of any time. So on first down there, Salerton gave the ball to Jalen White off the left side. He picked up about two, and we're winding down under two minutes and 20 seconds left. Salerton has a second and nine from the 42. Give to White again up the middle, and he's met immediately. Cody Muller and takes his first time out. Still two minutes to go on the clock. Want to uh, say thank you to uh, Mr. Jeremy Friedman, who's our uh, broadcast journalism uh, teacher. Uh, he has uh, done a fantastic job as we've gone through. Um, the, uh, the regular season uh, with live streaming games. Um, we've been able to show all the sports uh, at least once or twice. Um, we've done all the home football games since uh, the season uh, began. Um, MJ McFellan has done a great job producing and directing. Um, he's uh, got uh, great kids doing cameras. 
Um, Emily Hagen, my daughter, has been doing the replay cameras for us, and uh, Tim Grindle has been doing an unbelievable job. He's one of my seniors uh, helping set up and uh, getting everything ready for the games each week. Um, my daughter Kylie Hagen is working on the cameras tonight along with several other Penridge TV students. So here we go. We got a third and nine. Southerton is bringing an offensive lineman in motion. And the gives outside. He's got a big hole. Yep. And he's, he's got a first down. down. He's got a first down. But uh, 155 to go. First down. Um, I think they're at the point where they're going to probably one, run a couple more plays and uh, start the kneel down process. Southerton gives up the middle, Oops. and it's White and Zmet immediately in the backfield. And that was, I believe, Jake Tarburton. Tarburton's had a heck of a senior season. I mean, he's just a heck of a player. I, I, Scott, I, I've been watching Penridge football for 19 years, and uh, Jake Tarburton's one of my favorite players to watch. He gives you every ounce of effort on every single play. He just plays as hard as he possibly can. Yeah, it's been absolutely. a pleasure watching him play. I think all of our seniors have done a fantastic job uh, getting to know them over the last four years as their house principal. Um, there are nothing but gentlemen in the building. Um, flag on the play. Uh, we have a flag on the play here. Um, but yeah, they are uh, upstanding young men. Coach Muller has done a fantastic job leading them uh, on the field and off the field. And um, to go undefeated and to win a, a district place has been uh, just absolutely fantastic. Sure, I'm, I'm sure this isn't the I'm sure this isn't the result they wanted tonight. Um, but when they look back, they, they'll do they'll, they'll be able to say they've done something that no other Penridge team has ever been able to do they they played for a district one championship yeah uh, and that's nothing nothing to sneeze at they they did a heck of a job they had a great season under trying circumstances um they did everything their coaches asked i know their coaches worked real hard and they're proud of them um and i know they'll go back to the drawing board and they'll be ready to play quaker town that they'll be pumped up for that ball game yeah. quaker town is a one loss team they did lose to saturn in the opening week but they are uh they are locked and loaded. They have great talent. They still have one more game next week against Downingtown West, I believe. And uh, so they're going to come in a short week where uh, our guys are going to get a, a couple days off probably next week to regroup and uh, mend some injuries and then uh, move forward. So uh, at the uh, conclusion of this game, please stay with us. We are going to uh, keep the cameras on the, uh, the field to... Uh, honor both the, the, the Saturn and Indians as the District 1 champs and uh, the Penridge Rams as the runners up. Um, we wish Saturday the best of luck next week against uh, St. Joe's Prep. Um, I just want to say congratulations to Ed Gallagher, his coaching staff, and the players at Satterton High School on their District 1 championship. They played a heck of a ball game. Congratulations. Absolutely. So stick with us. We're going to sign off uh, from the booth, but we're going to keep the cameras on them so that uh, you can watch the, uh, the ceremonies at the end of this game. Uh, we thank you and uh, tune in to the Chamonix YouTube tomorrow at 3 o'clock for the boys' soccer game. And then uh, we are working on getting a plan together to do the girls' Eastern Finals uh, from Hellman Field on Tuesday evening. Uh, I believe it's a 7 o'clock start against either Archbishop Ryan or Who? Parkland. Mr. Ott is uh, fully vested in this game. Uh, Archbishop Ryan is his alma mater. And we his, are, baby. His, we are. Uh, his uh, three kids, including his son Raymond, who's uh, standing behind us, uh, has done a great job uh, standing behind us the entire game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he plays for uh, Parkland uh, football team. And, uh, he's going to go into uh, finished up his freshman year and, and going to have a, a, a great career up there at Parkland. So we wish everybody uh, very well. Um, we'll hope to see you Tuesday night for the girls' soccer game. Uh, and then uh, Thanksgiving, we'll uh, send out information about the live stream. Have a great night. Everybody drive safe.
uh, Saturday, be careful driving home on 113. A lot of deer out there this time of year. All right, take care. Bye-bye. the Center Indians on their District 1 Class 6A Championship. Next week we'll travel to take on St. Joseph's Prep. The winner of that will advance to Hershey for the PAA State Championship.
this person in there. Okay. That's a bit I don't know. Yes, we can. Hi, welcome to the Penridge Saturday and Halftime Show here for the District 1 6A title game. Uh, we have a special guest with us today, uh, Mr. Lewis Riddick, uh, 1987 graduate of Penridge High School. You may recognize him as a color commentator on Monday Night Football with uh, Brian Greasy and Steve Levy. So uh, welcome, Lewis. How are you today? Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. This is, this is cool to be here. This is a big moment. We're in the middle of a big football game here. I mean, that... This is pretty cool in the in the history of Pembridge football, for sure, for sure. No doubt. First time we're ever playing for a district championship, um, and it happens to be against our rivals on the other side of County Line Road. Yeah. Um, it's not the old days of Saturn Stadium and, uh, and Papa Yoder from back when you played, but this is the 90th version of this game. Uh, the Rams have won 48 of those, looking for their 49th victory tonight. But uh, do you just want to give us a, a little bio on uh, what you've been doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been doing a lot. I mean, it, it's been a, it's been a wild road since my time, you know, at Penridge, uh, great memories there, obviously, you know, I've since graduating there in 87 and going on to Pittsburgh, playing in the pros for seven years, being in front office of the NFL for 12 years, and then being at ESPN since 2013, it's been, it's been an interesting career path for me. Um, it's obviously culminated in the pinnacle of broadcasting as far as I'm concerned, as far as doing Monday Night Football. I think everybody is aware of just how iconic that brand is. Everyone, you know, from children to adults have great memories of, or have some kind of memory of, of Monday Night Football if you're a sports fan. You know, I remember my days when I was a child, you know, when Monday Night Football used to be on ABC and it came on at 9 o'clock p.m. begging my dad to let me stay up at least halftime I wouldn't make it past the quarter but I would stay up and and watch Howard Cosell and Frank Gifford and Don Meredith so to be doing that now is actually pretty darn cool it's uh you have to pinch yourself every once in a while you know when you think about you know who you're speaking to and what you're representing uh doing the NFL draft is another one of my career highlights as far as a broadcaster is concerned one of the most watched things in you know in sports in the in the spring every year so it, it's been uh it's been great. I've been very fortunate. Um, my pro playing career was very fortunate then to be coached by some of the great coaches of all time. So it's been pretty, it's been pretty eventful since I left, uh, left Penridge High School. But uh, a lot of great memories going back there as well. 
So a nice segue there. Uh, you must do this for a living. Uh, what's your favorite memory uh, when you were back here at Penridge High School? Yeah, there, there's a number of them. It, it's hard to pick one. So I'll, I'll just give you like kind of a, a, a couple of them. Obviously, Thanksgiving football was always like the highlight of my year because, you know, we did a my, my family lived close to Quakertown. I was always around that area. I knew a lot of those kids I was playing against and competing against every year. And that's such a tradition rich game that all of those battles were always very memorable for me. My senior year in particular, having a bunch of college coaches at that game when I was being recruited, that always is something that sticks out. The games against Soderton stick out for me because that was a big, big rival in high school. Teams used to always, we used to always as a football team go to have breakfast at the old Keystone Diner down on, uh, uh, what is that old mountain bike? Yeah, I mean, so I used to go down there every, you know, the morning before that game. Uh, my Wissahickon game when I was a senior, I had, I believe, five touchdowns in that game my senior year at Poppy Order Field. I remember playing against the Chamonix, not supposed to be able to beat the Chamonix, and we, we beat them up pretty good when I was a senior. Playing against Central Bucks West and the great Mike Pettin, those great teams that West had at those times and almost went in those games. There's just so many different memories, man, that uh, I couldn't pick one. So, as you can tell, that time period in my life had a, had a big impact on me. Yeah, high school football and high school athletics in general uh, mold mold people into who they are later. In Absolutely. Time. Yeah, the, those coaches that you had uh, that you played here for, Coach Kristiniak, and I know yeah. you're very close to Coach Hozier, our track coach, who's a football mm-hmm. coach at that point. What did they do to prepare you? Not necessarily the athletic side of things, but how did they prepare you to be a, a man and and to go and live the life that you've lived? Well, I think. For me, there's kind of like a crossover between football and life, obviously. And I remember a game against Harry S. Truman when I was a senior. And the week before that, ironically, we had played Soderton. I had gotten a pretty nasty gash on my arm that that required significant stitches. And, you know, it was, you know, it was at an area that, you know, had a risk for being ripped, reopened and getting infected and stuff. And I remember in the game against Harry Truman, the next week, I wasn't going to play running back. I was just going to play defense. But, and uh, we were struggling. We weren't going to, you know, we weren't putting any points on the board. And I remember Christinia coming to me in, at halftime and saying, hey, look, you know, you, you have to make a choice here. You know, are you going to be – can can you help us out here? Can you go back on offense and actually play in this game and help us out? And I remember the, the lesson that it taught me then was, you know, fortitude, resilience, making, you know, calculated judgments about, you know, what are you really willing to sacrifice in those times for other people and for your football team? And I think that was kind of a turning point for me because it was the first time that I thought I had ever really been questioned about just what kind of resilience and toughness I had. And we could wind up coming back and winning the game. And um, I think those are kind of the lessons that you're taught in high school. You're, you're taught a little bit about what it means to kind of like lay it on the line for others. Um, sacrifice for others just how you know what are your limits how far are you willing to go um, and those are I remember that that day in particular kind of like started me on a little bit of a different path as to how I really approach the physical aspect of the game in particular and so that, that's probably one of the most one of the most vivid memories that I remember being uh, taught so to speak in high school All right it's uh, it's been a great place. Uh, and this is we played our 950th game a couple weeks ago at Penridge. So between mm-hmm. Park High School and Penridge, it's uh, it's been a great ride. Um, we've got uh, we had the girls soccer team win the state or the district title last night. Um, excuse me, Thursday night our boys played right before this game, and obviously so three teams playing for district championships. If you had a chance, I know it's COVID and we can't have visitors into the school per se, but if you had a chance to address our student athletes, what, what words of wisdom could you give them? Well, I, I think, you know, when, when I was in high school, I, I think I never, I never really took in and really kind of digested when people said to, to really kind of dive into and be present in the moment during these during this period in your life when you're in high school because it's a very impressionable time. It's a, it's kind of a time where you're really laying a foundation for who you want to be both personally and professionally. Uh, and I know it's hard for for kids who are you know 16, 17, 18 years old to understand that you're laying a foundation for the rest of your life and you're developing relationships, habits, thoughts, priorities as far as how you want to do things going forward. But you need to kind of like give give some thought to it because it really is like a springboard to everything else that you're going to do later on in life. 
And like I said, you know, going back to that moment, you know, playing against Harry S. Truman, it kind of changed how I kind of approached uh, things from a competitive character standpoint. And I think whether it is, whether you're in on a football field or on a hockey field or, you know, on a baseball diamond or on the, on the track, running track, you know, you still need to, you know, you, you need to kind of approach things with the, that kind of competitive character and resilience that is going to set you up for later on in life. Don't blow any of those moments off. You will remember them for the rest of your life. You'll lean back on some of those. You'll, you'll look back on some of those things that you uh, established when you were in high school when you were going through these types of experiences and they'll serve you well, especially if you've invested and put in, put in the time. Again, I know that's a lot for young kids to have to think about at this point in time, especially in the environment that they're in right now, which right now they're just trying to stay safe and stay healthy. They're trying to, you know, have a good high school experience given the fact that things are so different right now as they, as opposed to just two years ago, but try to keep that in mind. Try to keep in mind to maximize everything that you're doing right now and understand that it's something that's going to serve you for years down the road. It just is. Just trust me. I'm not that old guy who's coming back and saying, hey, look, I have all the answers for you. But I remember my whole high school years like they were yesterday and they still impact me now. They really do. And trust me, 10, 15, 20 years from now, all the kids who are in high school now, you will look back on these times now and you will be able to trace the origin of some of the things that you do later in life to this moment right now. I promise you. Thank you for your time. This has been a wonderful experience with, for me um, as being a fan of yours and you're on the field playing against my high school, CB West, and, um, you know, watching you, what you've done on ESPN since 2013 and following your professional career while I was in my college days. Um, it's been uh, an awesome morning spending it with you. Um, we're going to head back to live action in just a moment uh, for the second half of the district finals for PIAA District 1.